and many probably are just as unaware that you served on the board of directors for the now defunct National Minority Golf Foundation, which began yep. in the mid 1990s under the leadership of the late great John Merchant, a mentor of mine who I miss dearly. Uh, yep. You also had through those years close relationships with the later Earl Woods, Tiger Woods' is dad, Lou Horn, Barbara Douglas, and Bill Dickey. I believe all of them served on your AJGA board at one time or another, uh, and you had personal relationships with them. So please share a few of your memories from those close relationships with who I think are black golf giants and legends. And uh, did any of them influence your commitment to diversity and inclusion in golf? They all did uh, in different ways. And, and, and thank you for, again, for the opportunity to, to speak with you today. But uh, all great people uh, with with different uh, stories. Uh, Bill Dickey. I, I I love Bill because he was very cool and calm. Um, had a great mission and purpose to his program, uh, combining golf and college and academic. Just a beautiful program uh and we he was uh he was a great board member uh mm -hmm. wouldn't wouldn't give his uh wouldn't say a lot but when he did you really listened yeah. um and i i we supported his program every year gosh michael i think for 25 years wow. uh 25 30 years so um Great man. You know, I think Earl Woods uh, was one of the most misunderstood and misrepresented hmm. people. Uh, a lot of the media, you know, hyped him up as some, you know, turning Tiger into a robot and a demanding parent and, you know, this, that, and the other. He was one of the best parents we ever had. Hmm. One of the best parents we ever had. He never... He never followed Tiger. If there was like a three-hole loop, he would do three holes. That'd be enough for him. And then when Tiger got off the course, he'd be going to play ping pong with his buddies for hours. And he would never go to the practice range afterwards. Uh, and his dad said, I remember this one quote, he says, you know, he's just grinded for four and a half, five hours, now it's time for him to be a kid. Wow. I thought that was pretty refreshing. That's, that's and pretty it's cool. not the, the Earl <clears throat> that the media right. hyped up. Right. Uh, Lou Horn was just an amazing man. Was our, uh, he was Mr. Everything. He was our legal counsel. He was secretary of our board. Uh, he, he loved junior golf i mean he'd come to tournaments you couldn't wipe the smile off his face he loved the kids he loved the competition he came to an awful lot of tournaments he he actually um brought some kids over when we played in the junior open in england uh he would be the the host and bring kids over and and uh wow. supervise them for the week uh you know, on his own dime and, and things like that. Uh, and, and then he headed up the National Minority Golf Foundation, which that was really our start in, in this DI program, <laughs> was that uh, he had a database of uh, young men and women who were playing golf, and he knew where they were, and he knew where our tournaments were. Right. And he would say, hey, can we get a spot for this person? Can we get a spot for this young lady and this young man? Let's, can we get him into the, you know, and we would work with him and get these young minority players into the AJGA. Um, so he was very special uh, and helped us in, in a lot of difficult situations. Barbara was great. She took over for Lou for the National Minority Golf Foundation Executive Director. Uh, got to know her very, very well. Uh, just an amazing woman in golf uh, to where she went with her status at the USGA. Uh, I 
believe she was on the executive committee. Yeah, she, she was. She was. Yeah. Um, just, uh, just a delight, hardworking, very business uh, like great lady. I, I enjoyed uh, getting to know her. So in, in different ways, they, they definitely uh, inspired me and, um, and I'm glad that we've had them as part of the AJGA. 